YTBC was the deal. So it didn't take that long, man, to find another <laughs> racial fueled uh, matchup. If you want to put it like that, Triple G versus Andre Ward. I did a video about a few days ago about an article I read on Boxing Scene. It says uh, Little G is ducking Andre Ward. Ward came out with an interview that was on Fight Hub TV. And he was pretty much saying how his people offered uh, Triple G 50-50. And he turned down the fight within five minutes or something like that. We know about Triple G. When they did want to fight Ward, they wanted it at 164. Let me just give my thoughts on this, man. For one, you know, this is going to be Mayweather and Pacquiao all, all over again. I can just see, just by reading the comments here on YouTube, I can see people are taking sides. And it is what it is, man. I'm just going to give you my thoughts on both fighters and uh, where it's going to go from there. I'm not really going to say this guy's ducking this guy, this guy's ducking this guy, this guy. I'm tired of that shit, man. We, we just went through seven, eight years of that. And... You know, Pacquiao, Mayweather, Triple G, War. This isn't the first time things like this has happened. You know, you can go back to Joe Lewis versus Schmeling. If you want to go, uh, what's another racial field one? Um, Holmes and Cooney. You know, so it's always, this is always going to be like this, man. It's always going to be white versus black. You know, it is what it is. Um, when I look at a guy like Andre Ward, all right, now he he fought his last fight against Paul Smith. It was at a catch weight. What was he one, one seventy one or something like that? I was looking at Andre Ward's uh, career, man, and you know he's an eleven year pro. You know he turned pro was it two thousand and four? He won the Olympics in two thousand and four. Um, so he's been a pro for eleven years. He won the Olympic gold medal at one hundred and seventy eight pounds. He won it at light heavyweight. So he actually went down in weight when he turned professional you know so i mean it's like for him not to go up and just fight at 175 you know it's almost like damn dude like what are you waiting for i mean you've been a pro for 11 years i mean for christ's sake you won the gold medal in the olympics at 178 you know you were at that weight class now did he weigh the full 178 i'm not sure but he fought at that weight class you know so to me it's like man when are you going to move up i mean you're 31 years old when is a good time for you to just fully move up to 175? I'm not understanding why you just can't move up. You know, uh, in his 11-year career, he's weighed as low as 159.5. And he's weighed as high as uh, 171 and I think three quarters. So for 11 years, I mean, he's pretty much been in the same weight range fighting. So when is a good time for you to move up? 2008, 2009, and 2015, he fought at 171. I mean, you know, like I said, in 2003, shit, you fought at 178 in the amateurs. So, you know, then I heard his team say that, you know, he's going to need, you know, I've heard uh, Virgil Hunter say, you know, you're not going to do us like that. You know, we're not going to fall for the okie doke, meaning that when they go up in weight class, his fighter is going to be comfortable with that weight class before he settles in and start taking on the top opposition. Okay. Again, you've been pro for 11 years, man. That pretty much this virtual, this the same weight class. Yes, he did weigh in at 160 and 159 in his career before, but even I, you know, 2005 and up, he's been, you know, pretty much the same weight. So when is a good time for you to move up? You're 31. You know, so to me, it's just like when when is a good time for him to move up? You look at his career now, you know, they're talking about if these guys were the fight a side, B side. You know, when I when I look at Andre Ward's career, man, I mean, he's beat Carl Froch, Abraham, Kessler, Dawson, Saki Obika. He's had some good wins, even Alan Green. I mean, he beat a twenty nine and one Alan Green. Alan Green still has something left in the tank. You know, he beat Green, he beat uh, Edwin Rodriguez, an undefeated fighter. You know, so he's had some good wins, you know. Could he stay at 168? I I'd like to see him one stay at 168. I'd like to see him fight Badu Jack, James DeGale. You know, um, he's already beaten Abraham. Abraham has the WBO. He's already, you know, he's already beaten him. So if he did want to stay at the weight class, 
even if he was to fight just DeGill and Jack, and if he wanted to unify fully and fight Abraham, if he still has a title, I would be fine with that. You know, uh, shit, Marlon Starlin was pretty much a lifelong welterweight. He fought his whole career one weight class, you know, so and we don't downgrade Marlon Starlin. And when Starlin did move up, I've just been watching a lot of Marlon Starlin lately, but lately, but when Starlin did move up, he moved up two weight classes without filling out anything. He just moved right up to middleweight and fought Michael Nunn. Then he went right back down to welterweight. And I believe he fought Maurice Blocker. So all this, you need five fights, four fights. Virgil Hill's talking about it's like, dude, what? Or Virgil Hunter. It's like, uh, I mean, you really need four. Like, who are you going to get these four and five fights against? Paul Smith's? You know, you're going to fight a bunch of Paul Smith caliber guys. But if you want to move up to light heavyweight, man, you got to fight some competition, man. Even if you don't fight, you know, we know Kovalev has the uh, the WBA, WBO and IBF. We know that Stevenson has the WBC. They have to fight. I don't want to see anybody fighting those guys until they get it on and settle that. Because this shit's been going on for like two years now. But if you do want to come and get a feel for it, how about a John Pascal? How about an Arts or Better Beef? Or a Fun Fowler? Or a Boutte? Or what's the other kid that has a WBA uh, intern? Was it Jurgen Brommer? How about him? Somebody, man. Give us somebody. We, I don't, nobody wants to see you in 80 to 1 odd fights. Nobody wants to see that. I think you're a big boy. You're 31 years old. You've been at 168 your whole career for 11 years. You know, then you fought at 178 in the amateurs. It's probably time for you to move up, man. If he doesn't fight war, I mean, if, if war doesn't fight Triple G, fine. He doesn't have to. Either clean up super middleweight and fight DeGale and Jack. Or uh, the guy that has the interim uh, version of your WBA, Fedor Shudinov. Give that guy a shot, you know what I'm saying? Fight him, do something, man. But nobody wants to see you against fucking Paul Smith. Now, Ward has the talent, man. He has pound for pound top five talent. I say just move up to 170, just stay at 175, man. I mean, so what's next? You're going to fight your next fight at 173 to test the weight and then 174. And then finally, I mean, come on, man. I don't think we need to be so... uh. What's the word I'm trying to find? Uh, strategic with Ward. He's a fighter, man. Just fight at 175, dude. Like, what? what's the big problem? Now, when I look at Triple G, you know, I hear a lot of black fans, man, uh, say that, you know, he hasn't fought anybody. He fought bums. A lot of black uploaders feel that way. And that's fine if you feel that way, but. We have to figure out, you know, black fans, man, we have to figure out what we like and what we don't like. Because when I hear you guys big up your favorite fighter, you know, you always say, well, this guy, he's not fighting young black fighters. This guy, okay, well, Triple G fought two young black fighters. You might not think much of Willie Monroe Jr. in his resume, and that's fine. But when you look at the, according to Box Rex, when you look at the top 10 American middleweights, Curtis Steven is number 10, Willie Monroe is number five. Let me just run this down to you. Box rec for American middleweights. They have Peter Quillen number one. I've heard Quillen say that the Golovkin fight doesn't make sense. Now, does that mean he'll never fight Golovkin? No. But when they that fight was brung to him, I've heard him say oh, that fight doesn't make sense. Jermaine Taylor's number two. We know his situation. He was an IBF champion. I would have loved to see Taylor versus Golovkin. But Taylor's incarcerated or I don't know if he's out yet. He got a lot of mental things going on. Then you have Daniel Jacobs. I've heard him say the Golovkin fight doesn't make sense. Now, does that mean he'll never fight Golovkin? No. Just at the time, he said it doesn't make sense. But Jacobs and Quillen are going to fight each other. Okay. Then you, number four, they have Dominic Wade. So Dominic Wade and Willie Monroe Jr., I mean, is there really much of a difference? That's a young black fighter that he gave a shot to, and he beat him. And Willie Monroe isn't just some just bum ass fighter. I mean, he did, you know, he he, uh, he does have, uh, you know, he does have a winning ways about himself. He won the ESPN Boxino tournament. He did be very. I mean, he, you know, 
he does have some good wins. And he's young and he's black and he's athletic. And he got his shot. Curtis Stevens, same thing. Power puncher. Young. In his prime. He gave him a shot. They have Caleb True, number nine. He's from Minnesota. And he wouldn't really, I mean, I've seen Truex fight. He wouldn't beat no Triple G. He did knock down Jermaine Taylor, you know, uh, on Showbox. I watched that fight. But, and then, you know, Antoine Douglas. You want to put Douglas in there this early against Triple G? You got to give him credit, man. He fought a young black fighter, and when he fights, nobody wants to give him credit for it. He fought two of them in the top 10. Now, I know, you know, Demetrius Andre and uh, Laura have, has called him out. They're 154 pounders. He did say he'll go to 154 to fight a Floyd Mayweather. I, I understand that. But to me, just in my opinion, Andre and Laura both get knocked out. But even with that said, you can't say he's avoiding slick fighters and black fighters because he fought two black fighters. Even if you don't think Monroe and Stevenson are slick, they're still young and they're black and he beat them. I'm just giving him his props. Then when it comes to some of you guys' favorite fighter, you always tell me how your favorite fighter has fought this many, you know, former or current intern or full champions in their career. But then when Triple G does it, for some reason, it doesn't count. He had good wins over Rosado, Ashita, and Macklin. Matthew Macklin was a, you know, decent fighter. Uh, I forgot who he lost to. I want to say it was uh, Felix Sturm. He lost a close fight to for a title. Ashita knocked uh, James Kirkland into next week. And Rosado's a decent, slick fighter. He does get into brawls, but, you know, he has a good style. Those are good wins. Not all-time Hall of Fame wins, but those are good, decent wins. Daniel Gill is a former IBF champion in middleweight. Kasim Uma is a former junior middleweight champion. Marco Antonio Rubio is a former intern WBC champion. Martin Murray is a former intern WBA champion. And now he's fighting David Lemieux, an IBF champion. Who got TKO by Rubio. So you can't say he's fought nobody. Even if you want to say Macklin, Ishida, and Rosado are nobody... Gil, Uma, Rubio, Murray, and Lemieux, which he hasn't fought yet. Lemieux, those are what? One, two, three, four, five. Those are five guys that have either been interim champions or the full champion. Now, if you want to say that Andre Ward's level of competition is higher than Triple G, we can debate that. That's fine. But to say, you know, Triple G has fought nobody. He's fighting bums. And it's, I mean, <laughs> come on, man. Now, is he, you know, are we going to rate right now, this time of day, rate Triple G higher than Hagler and Monzon and B-Hop? No, because his career, I mean, he's still got to finish his, his career out. But to say he's some bum and he's a, the, a white hype, I, I, I don't believe that. Because if he's such a white hype, why the hell did Quillen and her... Uh, Jacob said that fight doesn't make sense because if they thought they can easily mop the floor with him, they would have took the fight for the recognition because they know Triple G is getting a lot of fame right now. The dude goes to New York and, and he fights, you know, in New York and he has a big fan base over there. 10,000 plus come out to see this dude. I mean, he's probably more popular when he comes there than Quillen and Jacobs are. So to sit and act, you know, to act as if we don't know who this guy is and he's getting a pay-per-view fight. We'll see how good the pay-per-view does. But he's, you know, I don't see them saying Quillen on a pay-per-view or Jacobs. You know, and then he's, you know, Triple G's doing a good thing right now in the middleweight division, man. He's fighting the IBF champion. You know, he is the WBC intern champion. Cotto and Canelo, WC, WBC made it clear. The winner of that has to fight Triple G. And then he's the WBA super champion. And then Andy Lee, who's the WBO champion, said he's willing to fight uh, Triple G if and when he gets past Billy Joe Saunders. So I like what Triple G is doing in the middleweight division. Now, if you want to look at Triple G and say, man, well, you know, you say Ward 31 years old and he should move up. And he's been a pro for 11 years at the same weight class. OK, well, Triple G, he could move up too. you know, he's 33 years old. These, these guys are, you know, in their uh 
early 30s, man. But it's not like these dudes are 22, 23. Both of these dudes can move up. But if they're going to stay in their weight classes, their respective weight classes and handle business, that's fine. Triple G's been pro for nine years. You know, he fought in the, he fought in the amateurs, uh, the 04 Olympics. He fought at 165. You know, so I don't want to hear, you know, uh, he can't move up because he can move up. Both of these guys could move up if they wanted to. And what's so funny about those 2004 games uh, War could have fought at 165 in the amateurs, but they let uh, they wanted Andre Durrell to fight at 165, and then they wanted War to fight at 178 to make the USA teams. Both of these guys were excellent amateurs, man. They beat uh, I know Triple G beat Boutte and he beat Andre Durrell in the Olympics. Some other good wins. Ward had really good wins in the amateurs. Both these guys lost under five five fights or less in the Olympics. We know Triple G won, you know, 345 fights. I believe War was 115 and four in the Olympics. Both these guys come from crazy pedigrees. They're both good fighters, man. They're they're both really good fighters. And I think we're doing these dudes an injustice by picking one side and just totally shitting on the other side. This is Pacquiao Mayweather all over again. Despite of who you think will win, you can't sit here and tell me how shitty Ward is. You're being a hater, man. Like that's if you think Andre Ward's a shit fighter and he's, you know, he's he just some shitty fighter, you're 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 bullshit, man. And if you think Triple G is some just shit bullshit fighter, a hype, you're bullshitting. If they never fight, fine. But I'm not my channel, I'm not gonna sit here and do this shit, man. You know, this guy's better than this guy. I'm not doing that. Both these guys are the best at their weight classes. In my opinion, they haven't unified fully. But the eye test and certain guys turning down fights against these guys. I think these guys, I think Triple G is the best at middleweight. I think War is the best super middleweight. But I don't know. He's at. He's fighting his catch weight. He's on his catch weight shit right now. This 170 shit. You know, but I'm not going to get into Pacquiao Mayweather with this, man. Um, both of these guys are, you know, uh, pound for pound top five fighters, in my opinion. If they do, you know, whether it's at a catch weight, whatever they come to agree that I'm, I'm fine. If it's 164, cool. If war comes all the way down to 160, cool. If Triple G goes up to 168, cool. But my opinion about these guys when they fight is still the same. I already know who's going to win the fight. And I'm not going to say I I know who's going to win it, but I have a pretty good idea who I would favor in the fight. But I would really like to see Ward at 175, man. Let's just forget about Triple G. Ward, go up to 170. Either unify 168, DeGale, you know, Jack. If you're not going to do that, go up to 175. And I don't want to see you in there with f four different versions of, you know, a Paul Smith type of opponent. YTBC, I'm out.